boxing truth here. I wanted to talk a little bit about Kell Brook and how his career would have panned out and what he would have to deal with had he not taken the Gennady Golovkin fight. Kell Brook's career is uh, somewhat tragic. It's been it's an underachieving career. And now he's talking retirement. The the beatings he took in his last two fights have changed his look on boxing and mentally he's to that point where he doesn't really he's not really in love with the sport anymore. Those type of tough fights that he took in his last two fights can have that type of effect on you mentally as a prize fighter. To where Kell Brook is thinking about life after boxing. What's he going to do after since he can't be taking those type of beatings in the ring now that he's on the verge of, of turning 32 years old. So it's a career that's been underachieved. He's If he truly retires at the end of this year, then it's, it's a career that that's left with a lot to be desired. It'll be a career that his greatest achievement is just that wor- lone world title win against Sean Porter on the wor- on the road. Made a few defenses, and then dared to be great by moving up to the weight divisions to fight Gennady Golovkin. But let me talk about the situation of Kell Brook and and what was the major influence of him taking that fight, and was it a mistake when you look at it? Since we all knew he wasn't going to beat Golovkin. Sure, he, there was many that predicted he could put up a good fight, but even some predicted that thought he would win the fight. But ultimately, most thought Kell Brook would not beat Gennady Golovkin. And as a result, he got a a type of injury that's, that's hard to come back from. And, you know, a broken eye socket that could really fuck with your psyche mentally. It could uh, make you be wary of taking punches in that in that area. So it's a it's a very bad injury to get, especially if you're going to move forward as a prize fighter. But let's talk about Kelbrook's situation and why what influenced him to take the Gennady Golovkin fight. And Kelbrook was unlucky. He became a world champion at the worst possible time. He was dealing with two superstars in his weight class who were fighting opponents that that they could fight, in-house fights of, of names that were more popular in America. So Pacquiao and Mayweather, they had a lot of leverage when it came to their prospective opponents in their division. They were focused on fighting guys mostly within their realm, avoiding each other, and fighting names that were recognized in America. And that, that was a problem with Kell Brook. He was a champion, but he was an unknown commodity in, in the United States of America. And what made it worse is that he wasn't the biggest name in the UK, and he was nowhere near even a pay-per-view fighter in the UK. So he wasn't the most attractive opponent. For Mayweather or Pacquiao, especially since there were other names they could fight in America that were more recognized. For instance, you know May- Mayweather's cherry picks like Robert Guerrero and my Maidana because those guys got more exposure in America. So those guys were a lot more. They had more exposure. They were seen a lot more compared to Kell Brook, who only fought once in America and in August in who was it, in Carson, California. In August of 2014 against Sean Porter, where he he outboxed him, but it wasn't the the most wowing performance. It wasn't the most thrilling performance. So a lot of the American boxing fans didn't really care about Kell Brook. They were all focused on the eventual Mayweather Pacquiao showdown that really disappointed. It was a, you know one of the biggest jokes in boxing. All that anticipation and build up just to see Mayweather run around to a to a predetermined outcome. Bullshit. So, Kell Brook, had he not taken the Gennady Golovkin fight, this is what he would have had to deal with. He This would have, this would have, would have been the alternative of his career. He was looking for a fight, 
prior to the Golovkin fight. He was trying to get some of the PBC fighters to come over. He would, Eddie Hearn reached out to Adrian Broner. They reached out to Danny Garcia for unification. Um, Brooke was always interested in fighting Keith Thurman. He called him out on more than one occasion. But those guys weren't willing to come over to the UK to fight him, even though they were offered significant offers to come over there. And so... Kell Brook was asked out, you know. He couldn't get Bradley to come fight him. He couldn't get Jesse Vargas to come fight him. The the, the deal fell apart when it came to that potential fight, unification fight. And he couldn't get uh, any of the other PBC fighters. So this is what Kell Brook's options were. And Khan didn't want to fight him for all those years and he was coming off the knockout loss to Canelo so he was going through his you know troubled period of being outside the ring and just making headlines but not fighting so here was the options that Kelbrook was left with when he was negotiating for his next fight in the in the second part of 2016 he had just made his mandatory defense against Kevin Bizier so he was he was he was the options here are the rankings I have the rankings in front of me at, at this time period it's a cool thing about the IBF. You can put in the, the year and, and month of of any time period and get those rankings. So Brooke was left with either fighting a Lamont Peterson, a Diego Chavez. Errol Spence was scheduled to fight Leonard Bundu to become his mandatory. So, Kell Brook was trying to get a big fight. He was in a voluntary stage. He had just fulfilled his mandatory obligations. So, he was trying to, you know, make some money. You know, get a little good payday. In. And this was the options. He couldn't get any of the other PBC guys to come over. Jeff Horn was, wasn't a big fight at the time. Andre Berto didn't want to come over. So, Kell Brook was truly asked out. It was either take the Golovkin fight for about, what, 3 million pounds? Or fight Lamont Peterson, which they agreed to in in principle for about less than seven figures. So it was a tough decision. Either you, you remain a champion, you fight Lamont Peterson, or you take a big risk for a, a lot more money and possibly become, you know, a, a really huge player in the game by beating Gennady Golovkin. So it was a tough choice, but when you look at it, had Kell Brook not taken that fight, he would have been criticized. All the you know the all the channels on YouTube would have been saying he's a he's a, he's a bomb. He, he don't fight nobody. He's holding that title hostage. He don't fight nobody legitimate. He's had the title for for two years, and he's not making he's not trying to fight the best out there. The king of mandatories. I mean, Kell Brook would have been ripped, and you, he would have been ripped, totally criticized if the Golovkin fight hadn't happened, because this would have, would have been the, the alternative, a Lamont Peterson fight or Diego Chavez fight, and then he would have beaten those guys, and then he would have to take the mandatory with Errol Spence. So, when you look at the business part of it. I can see why Kell Brook opted to take the Gennady Golovkin fight. But as a result, it most likely ruined his career. You look at his his health now. I mean, his eyes are still swollen. He don't look like 100% fully back. That he's really 100%. Still look like there's some some problems with with his eye. There's still some still a little looks a little swollen. But if you would have went this route, he wouldn't have had the big fight. He wouldn't have made any money. But he would have beaten Errol Spence if he didn't take that type of damage in the Golovkin fight. I have really have no doubt about that. He would have beaten him, but he wouldn't have gotten much props for it. People would have said, oh, he beat some hype job that fought nobody. Just some protected Heyman fighter that was hyped, that went over and was in over his head. That's what would have happened. But Brook, had he took this alternative, he would have his health would be 
in much better shape. He would be uh, psychologically in a better place. He wouldn't be thinking about retirement. And he will be still be considered one of the best fighters out there, top 15 pound for pound. Some people would have given him props for the Spence for the Spence fight, but a lot of people would have said that he was he beat some hype job, and that would have been his probably his biggest win to date, beating an Errol Spence as his mandatory fight had he not fought Golovkin in September of 2016. So there's pros and cons to each of the alternatives. And you see the the con the cons went uh, in taking the Golovkin fight. Yeah, he, he got the big payday, he got the exposure, his name uh went to another level, but he was damaged. He got a a bad injury as a result to that fight. Psychologically he's not the same fighter. The confidence is somewhat gone. And now Instead of just remaining undefeated and still being champion potentially, since I, I felt he would have beaten Spence had he not taken the Golovkin fight, he now has two losses on his record, somewhat of a damaged reputation, two damaged eyes, and on the verge of retirement. Instead of being undefeated, still world champion, but still had, had yet to get that big prize fight. It's tough. It's really a, a, a shitty situation Kell Brook was in. Becoming champion at the wrong time, not getting the big fights because his name wasn't big enough in the United States. Dealing with two superstars in his division that didn't that really made no effort to fight him. Having to fight a much bigger man, move up two weight divisions to get the big fight getting damaged in the process and losing his title in front of his hometown fans in his very next fight. Having a bad training camp and the injury, the weight, all that didn't really bode well for his for his bout against Errol Spence. He was at a disadvantage going into that fight in many ways. But it is what it is. He made his decision. And now this is where he's at now. Two losses, no strap. And already thinking about retirement. Just makes you wonder what Kell Brook's career would have went. How it would have went. Had he not took the Golovkin fight. Maybe his career would have been better. Maybe he, he would have accomplished a little more. Maybe he would have beaten Errol Spence had he not taken Golovkin fight. You never know. Maybe he would have finally got that unification he, he yearned for in the welterweight division. But that's how it wasn't it wasn't meant to be. This is how his career has turned out. And it's a career that's underachieved in my in my opinion. He should have accomplished a lot more. Not just some one world lone world title win and a few defenses. But what would y'all do if y'all was in that situation? It's the shittiest situation to be in. No big fights on the horizon unless you fight Golovkin. What would y'all do? This is Boxing Truth. I'm out.